Hello and welcome back to another show. My name's Sid. If you're new here, maybe consider subscribing, leaving a comment, liking the video if you like it when you get to the end. If you are already subscribed, thanks for watching, coming back. I appreciate the support. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you this sensor bar effect with tap to change features. And inside of each tap to change, I'm going to be showing you some different techniques that you can use to change the look of your filter. You can use these for other things outside of the sensor bar, but yeah, so I'm going to be showing you simple black reflective which i'm using the color green for but you can use any color then there's a simple like png file which makes it look like there's matrix text on my eyes then we've got clear glass almost like a some futuristic eyewear tech and then we've got full-on just inverted sensor bar which is like all around but not the eyes so yeah let's create a new i'll show you this is the patches really quick it's quite simple patches very like easy to replicate Maybe it looks complicated, but it isn't. Let's create a new project and I'll pause this, minimize, and we'll get started. So the first thing you're gonna do is find an image online for our PNG version. I Googled just scrolling green text and I got this matrix looking thing. So we'll import that asset into our computer. Just any image file is fine. Then we're gonna add a face tracker to our scene. And inside of that, we're gonna put some planes. Do a whole bunch of planes, probably need I'm gonna say eight, so we duplicate that, duplicate that. And then we've got our black, we've got our glass, we've got our reflective, sort of. We've got our P uh, image, we'll call it code. No, god damn it, code. And then up here we've got top, bottom, left, and right. You'll see why in a bit. So, Basically now we're gonna make these four invisible for a second because they're annoying and they get in the way. Probably just make, and then we're gonna select all of these, oh, hopefully, and we're gonna adjust the size. So let's zoom in on this a little bit and make this slightly larger. And then what we're gonna do is come over to these scales and we're gonna adjust them. So you wanna make the scale this slightly wider. Then you wanna make this slightly thinner. So we'll come down to like 3.5, maybe like, I don't know, 3.8. And then here's the Z axis, as forwards or backwards, you can adjust that afterwards, and it doesn't really matter. But you want all four of these to be different colors. Now we can create our material layers. This is quite annoying, it takes a while. So we do black, and then glass, and then reflective. God, I did it again. And then code. So we don't need that, do we? Oh yeah, we do. <laughs> code. So now inside of code, we can add our green text, which is the top, because it's top layer right now, you can see it more clearly. I'll even switch over to the FaceTime. We could just do it there on my frozen ass face. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, look, it's a little bit low. So what we can actually do is control shift all of them. This lets you move all of them at once rather than trying to line them up individually. So we could do that. We can move it slightly to the left. Just sort of get it in a place where you're happy with the look. So now all four of these layers are sitting on top of each other still. But like I say, you can click on one layer and move it individually and see everything underneath. Or you could just control shift and do it all at once. So yeah, this is the size, that's pretty much that done. Now we're gonna go into our patch editor. I'm gonna start into creating the interactive parts. So we're gonna come in with a screen tap, double tap on this uh, patch editor to add a script, to uh, bring up that menu, gonna add a screen tap. No, not screen pan, a screen tap, which allows the user to tap on a screen and change things, interact with it. Then we want a counter that iterates through a count that we designate. Right now it's set five, we might change that in a minute. And you wanna use the function equals exactly, which checks whether two numbers are the same. In this case, the one that we're iterating through in our counter and the one that we assign to each of these uh, planes. So we'll have equals exactly, copy that a bunch of times, maybe five, I don't know, kind of works. Uh, don't even need to move those, to be honest, just leave them as they are. So now we'll come in here, we'll control shift all of these, make them visible in the patch editor, and then just move things to the places and get, get everything connected up. Now this is super rough because I'm on my break from work and I'm in a little bit of a hurry. But yeah, you wanna change the numbers. We've got zero, one, two, 
three, and this one's four, and that's gonna be this down here, which we'll do in a second. But now basically this is tap to touch. Cool, so we've got that. Now we're gonna come over here and start changing these colors and things so that we can actually see what we're doing. We've got flat shader type for this one and we'll change the color to black. So this is our base layer, just normal. Iterate through, we've got glass and reflective, nothing on them. And then the matrix one with nothing on it. And then this one, which is uh, inverted, which we haven't even got visible at the moment, that's number five. And then it will iterate back through again. So now let's do glass. Make this physically based. We're gonna come in here down to add assets and we're gonna add environment textures. Just pick a couple of those. I'm gonna choose this one and this one. So for the glass, I guess I'll use Machine Shop because it's quite uh, bright. There's a lot of light in that one, but you can just play around with it. There's a bunch of HDRIs all over the internet. They're free. Check them out. Click on this. Then we can adjust some properties. Look at that. Looking good. Okay. So now that that's that, we'll kind of make it more of a blue color because glass has this sort of little blue reflective tint, maybe lighter blue. And then you want to reduce the opacity down to maybe 30, wherever you're kind of happy with it. And there you go, that's the glass look done. Next we have reflective, which you already saw me do with the glass one, but we'll do it again with a different HDRI just to show you. This time we use the sunny park. We'll rotate that a little bit. And then we can adjust the parameters slightly we'll change the color of this i used green because it's quite easy to see i'm going to change the rotation slightly look at that it's just like depends how reflective you want it but you could do anything you want pretty much like there's some street sign in the background <laughs> but yeah that's that one done now we click through we've got the matrix one and then all that's left are these four which are currently invisible and not connected so we'll make those layers visible and then we'll select the material layer, we'll just use black because it's inverted, so we can use the same material layer that we're using for this one up here. And I need to make four new ones. And now what we're gonna do is click on each layer uh, individually inside of our patch editor and just move it, basically. So what I wanna do is bring this up first of all so that I have the actual, uh, the actual black filter sensor bar and then I'm just gonna drag these around until they're in a good place. What I'm gonna do is scale these up as well. So I'll scale this one up lengthwise and you wanna go as high and outside of the scene as possible. And just make sure that no matter how far you hit, turn your head that it doesn't like show the edge of the box. Then you wanna do this for all of them. Just scale them up. This is the part that kind of takes a minute and it's just about adjusting and positioning, make sure everything looks good. And so, yep, we got that one. Now we'll do the bottom one. We'll scale that, we'll scale it along to the wide and then a little bit up and come back and move it down. And you really just kind of want to line it up to where your, uh, where your original sense bar is, if you get me. So we'll scale that one up as well. And we can move it a little bit more. Cool. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna quickly refresh it, play it, see how things are looking. If I click through, you can see it's not exactly lined up the way I want. So I'm gonna come down, I'm gonna adjust a little bit, give myself some eyes, which is what I wanted originally. Go like this, and now when we switch it about, it's not it's not so bad. This it doesn't actually matter too much because we're gonna be uh, we're gonna be high. This is gonna be in its own separate layer, but yeah, that's about right, I suppose. Now we'll click through. What we're gonna do next is we're gonna add all four of these. So Control Shift, uh, Control Click. We're gonna make all of these visible the same way we just did with the others. Drag them down. There's actually four patches. So right left bottom and top and you can connect many things to this so we'll just connect all four of these pal uh, these four uh, planes to the same one and then they will disappear but when we hit tap it will now iterate through our main four and then when we get to the fifth one you know pretty rocking 
and you can adjust the size and scale and all of this stuff you can even move the rotation if suddenly you realize that hey maybe like that's not dead straight on my face or whatever you can click through like that so yeah that's pretty much it now i'm going to show you how to add some instructions i mean look let me make this full screen here's the patch i made it's a screen tap with a counter that counts up to five we have a bunch of equals exactly's here set up with numbers iterating through zero to four which is our five step counter what I did was make each of these planes up here visible in the patch editor, connect them up so that they iterate on touch. We created a black sensor bar, a glass transparent sensor bar, a reflective shiny one, something with an image on that looks like matrix code, and this inverted one. Next up, we're going to add some instructions. So if you come up here to device, under custom instructions, patch, create instructions on opening, it will add these three patches into your scene, the runtime, the less than, and the instructions. Runtime is for as long as this is playing, so when someone touches and taps your filter, like opens it for the first time, that will be, uh, that's what runtime is. The less than is a count, there's anything below the count of five will enable something, and then as soon as it hits that count, it will stop. Come up here to properties, edit properties, capabilities, instructions, custom instructions, add. In this case, we're using tap to change, so we'll add a tap to change. I'm gonna copy this tag token paste it into here and then hit refresh you'll see the count now is already started it's well above eight it's well above five so there's nothing showing on the screen but if i hit refresh now on the bottom of the screen this shows up this checkbox counts to five and then checkbox disappears and so does this it's a pretty simple function it's very easy to implement just like the rest of this really so now we've got the tap to change uh, with the instructions i will also say if you come down here to the green text for any images and things that you import, PNGs, JPEGs, anything like that, where you, where, where it, uh, inside of the texture folder, you'll see it down here. Click on it, come under manual compression and select no compression. That way when you export to test on your device, it won't be blurry or low resolution. It will be the version that you're seeing on the screen while you're testing. Even though this is a low res image, but if you use something 4K or whatever, then there you go. That's a little handy tip. You can also come up to project, edit properties, compression, and under quality, increase to 100%. So now when you test on device, you'll, you'll see what you're seeing on the, on the desktop, basically. That's pretty much the whole video. Uh, I try to be quick because I have to go back to work in like five minutes, but I'll hopefully upload this when I get back at seven. Uh, sorry I took a day off yesterday. I feel a bit bad about that because I've been posting so many videos and I'm really liking it. It's been great. I'm having a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, but leave a like, comment, subscribe, let me know if you want to see any more tutorials, if you need any help with anything. Obviously, I'm not like an expert. I literally started this channel a few weeks ago just to teach myself how to uh, do some of this stuff. So the fact that a few of my videos already have a couple hundred views and I'm closing in on 30 subs and like the comments have been so nice. It's, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool to see. So I'm going to keep making these videos, but don't expect me to be that great at this whole thing i'm learning just as just as much as you are and i guess uh yeah that's about it peace i'll see you next time take it easy i gotta go to work <laughs> bye